Episode 7, Kibutsuji Muzan. This hat and tie wearing archdemon. <laughs> it's kind of great how, how actually terrifying she looks. Right, they have this lake, sometimes known as Pervert Lake. Let's go. She's ready to go. <laughs> She's done. Had enough. You attack my basket and also my brother. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, the floor. I feel like that would be such a key to this power. And she had no training. She sleeps for two years and has the same level of power as this guy. She's good. Yeah, she's going to do some of the protecting herself. You can fight side by side, back to back. Maybe you just got to go in. You just, I don't know. That'd probably kill you. <laughs> but he's he's got these water breathing techniques. He is going in. Damn, that's, damn, that's bold. I like it. Very myth-like. It's turned into a pretty cool, cool pair. <laughs> pretty cool team. Unbelievable bravery. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Oh, it looks like dirty water. But what's in the depths of the dirty water? Maybe a backstory. Were they victims of the swamp themselves? Yeah, he's also sinking like a rock. Stop. <laughs> the only way to face the darkness is by going into it. Right. In the water. <laughs> Go into the water. <laughs> yeah, teacher did a good job. Never been able to breathe. <laughs> this music, dude. <laughs> I had a feeling that's, that's what it would be. Become one with water, right? And that's when he knew he messed up. Right, but they get enhanced powers. This is their turf. This music is awesome. <laughs> To, like give full operatic or orchestrated treatment to the first fight. Literally one of breathing right now. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, it just kept kept cutting. And now that they're dead, maybe there's a little just a little time left over for their sympathetic backstory. You gotta kill them first, then take some time to heal. Take time to understand after they're dead. <laughs> Oh, there are three, right, right. As it goes like, your water slash is cool and all, but I'm gonna punch him real hard, <laughs> right in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's also a demon. You just touched the kawaii face? How dare you? You deserve to bleed. Turn this where it hurts the most. The face. <laughs> The sound effects are so A plus though. Nice slow mo. This is me regenerating in a flash. And I'm gonna hit you with this insult before I kill you. Hopefully that stops him from making that sound again. <laughs> After he cut out his tongue too. <laughs> Damn, even the demons are afraid of him. He fears this guy worse than he fears death. Huh, interesting. Good stuff. What a cool start to the episode. It seems like a lot of episodes in the show work in pairs. Like, I haven't finished this episode yet, so I don't know if it's going to be there, but so far there have been episodes with a setup or an obstacle or challenge in the form of, like, a rock or a lake of perverts. But then that thing becomes this sort of mythological symbol that Hanjiro has to deal with on some level, and it may not always be called into direct focus or articulated, but I feel like because it's satisfying, it means there's something there to take a stab at that swamp he just jumped into. I think what makes that so appealing or satisfying for me is that it's such a terrifying thing to look at. You're looking at this black abyss of water, which is not his element or any human's element, and inside is literal demons that will destroy you. Any rational person would never jump into that. And in fact, it doesn't really work if it's only the logistics of the fight, because it makes no sense for him to jump into that lake, right? But where it works is it's the strength to go into the unknown that is full of peril and an obvious risk of death in order to achieve victory in service of others. And not only that, it's his own darkness, right? Like in a very basic sense, it's just his own fear. But in another sense, it's more widely applicable. It's the darkness of the heart. You know, I think for us, the things that are the biggest danger and the things that are the most threatening are largely the unknown unknowns or the things that we can kind of see 
about ourselves, but in the periphery, there's, they're just removed enough that we can ignore them and pretend we don't know them, but they're sort of lurking there as darkness. And there's something beautiful to me and I guess inspiring as well to the question of, can you see your own darkness and then have the strength to jump into it without it destroying you? Like, could I face the worst elements of myself in a way where I'm not crushed by them and in a way where I gain insight and not destroy them necessarily because they're not necessarily bad things if light were cast on them, you know, but to sort of bring them under control to the point where it's not a darkness anymore. It's not something hidden and dangerous. And saying that out loud, I feel like there's a cliche element to that. But the reason for that is the same reason why I think it's satisfying if it's done right, because it's one of those fundamental human experiences or human threats or human risks and trademarks of a hero. This guy's roots spread pretty wide. He's got some kind of psychic network or maybe it's just fear. Yeah, this hurts so much of his... Yeah, yeah, he's doing all this on faith and he has no hint at all that there will be any resolution or answers for him. Let's go. Really thinking about that, really feeling it, I feel like it would be fatal. It would be fatal for so many endeavors. Yeah, and it's a very Ed Eric-like thing too, where just every day is just a reminder of his own failings. At least in his own eyes, he didn't actually do anything wrong. Go about your lives. <laughs> Everything will be okay, I guess. Maybe you can invite him to be a demon slayer, get those referral points. He's speaking from real life experience. No, no, you don't know what he knows. You don't know what he's been through. And even if he hasn't been through that, he's not wrong. Yeah, Tanjiro's reaction is understanding. The ribbon. He could have just slayed the demon and left, right? But that's not why he's here. That's not his motivation. Yeah. <laughs> like, for real. Like, a big one. You know, that's why, but it's also not why. You know what I mean? He understands, and he's a living example of what he's saying to keep moving forward. And that's specifically what led to the circumstances of him being on this journey, but it's not why he's acting like this or has understanding or sympathy. He's just like that. His primary fuel is is people and service, I think. Even the demon slaying right now is service to primarily his sister, but then also the people he meets. And that's It's evident in the way he interacts with people, that he's doing this out of feelings of compassion and humanity for, for other people, which is why he's such a good fit for this, which is why his initial weaknesses and ignorance, let's call it, in the beginning about, you know, not wanting to kill and things like that, doesn't disqualify him. And I think what the teacher or others saw in him, there is something great about his character that will enable him to have the strength and motivation to keep going and that will allow the technical skills to catch up, which is what's happened so far. His guiding source is not strength or wanting to be the most powerful or wanting to be the number one hero or whatever. It's very sort of feet to the ground making human connections, if that makes sense. It's coming up a lot recently, but you know, there's this thing that I, I experience a lot where it's like, you don't know what I've been through. And I think that's often a really valid thing to say when it comes to sympathizing, but that's sort of the limit to how true that is. Like if someone doesn't sympathize with you, it probably means they don't understand the depths of what you've been through. You can never understand someone fully without being them. That being said, I feel like that doesn't disqualify people from being right. It doesn't mean advice can't be sound, even if the emotions aren't there for them. That doesn't mean that other people's perspectives can't contain insight. And also, it's not a productive way to have a conversation because it's sort of like trying to claim a monopoly on a certain situation when no one really has any monopoly on, on experiences of life. And what it does is it shuts down the conversation and it ceases to be a process of seeking a resolution and ends up being in in many cases i think a way of grasping on to a negative ex experience and having it become a fixed part of identity almost as if to protect that notion that there is no resolution if that makes sense it's all right you're forgiven pay penance by living well the tears in the show are so ginormous. This is my bird friend. Yeah, yeah. Focuses on people. That's a pissed off face. We missed you. <laughs> Demons don't rest. It's one of the challenges of like being able to do things like that, being really capable, is how do you just determine when to rest? That's something that I thought about a lot with My Hero Academia. How can you rest knowing that there's crime? Yeah, it's a big city. Looks awesome. It's not Japan, but this reminds me of uh, a place in Chongqing, China. 
He's taking a, a little bit of a risk bringing his demon sister into the city, no? Not for them, but for her. Wait, wait, what? What was in the alley? Oh, it's a couple making out. This guy's seen some stuff. <laughs> I like this guy. I like his vibe. He gives Udon with strength. Looks amazing, as, as you would expect. No, the Udon! Oh no, that was such a crime to humanity. Must have been some smell to waste Udon like that. Bye, Nezuko. Enjoy your nap. Wow. That would do it. Get out of the way! This is the, that Assassin's Creed style of running through crowds. Nice hat. It could actually be him, could it? It actually could be him. Oh no, he's got a cute daughter! I was wondering and hoping. He's got a cute wife. It's a brilliant cover. But also possible it's not even a color. A cover. Now that's what I call a sticky situation. What did he just do? Did he just turn that dude into a demon? That was bold, right in front of Tanjiro. Wow, he could just turn him like that? Oh my god, in the city too. We got a full out, full on zombie demon outbreak, and now Tanjiro's got his hands full. Did he even need to do that? I feel like Tanjiro wouldn't have wouldn't have made a thing out of it right here. Well, that escalated. I guess there's no way of knowing that Tanjiro's not about to cut him down. But there's no way Tanjiro like chops his head off in front of the girl. I feel like that that would have led to a sit down dinner to discuss things. Hitting Tanjiro right where it hurts too. The the people quite the dilemma. I sort of had a feeling when his face got all dark and he was talking about I'm gonna destroy you as he was leaving the the village. I was like that's a little bit too one color for Tanjiro and something that is easy to say and easy to think when you're sort of conceptualizing people who have done you wrong abstractly. When they're in front of you, there's something about that that just hits you differently. It's why you can never really imagine the way interactions will go. You can never imagine a conversation. You ever have that experience where you, you really want to have a certain confrontation and you imagine the ways that it'll go and it's really easy to conceptualize, conceptualize yourself winning and being strong and powerful but it's a totally different game when you're face to face with that person because you're dealing with someone who is as complex as you and for someone who I feel deeply is able to relate to others and conceptualize their humanity it seemed unlikely that it would just be a matter of you know, fighting him, even without the daughter and wife, which makes it that much more complicated. It definitely adds something to the villain who could have, I feel, walked away, but did what, what I feel almost felt like a challenge. You know, he's off the rails. It doesn't have fear. It could have gone in a way where he's like, you know, trying to protect his existence and will sort of while his way out of this. But nope, he just started crazy demon zombie apocalypse in the city. It was nice while it lasted. <laughs> 